59 seconds of logos. No one is being slimed. Where is the slime? Badgers, 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 badgers. I'm sorry to say that this is not the movie you will be watching. Well then, thanks for the 100% waste of my time. Also narration. If you wish to see a film about a happy little elf, I'm sure there is still plenty of seating in theater number two. This joke absolutely killed before the pandemic. However, if you like stories about clever, and reasonably attractive orphans. Reasonably attractive? Why are we talking about children's attraction level on any scale? Was one of the finest 14-year-old inventors in the world. One of the finest of all two of them. The Baudelaire parents had an enormous library in their mansion. Look, there's enormous libraries and then there's f you libraries. This is an enormous f you library. Half these books are about where to find the real books in this place. The top book on the left stack is called Who's Who and What's She? And that is gibberish of the highest order. And lots of these books have odd titles, but then here is one called Awkward Juxtaposition, which is just a lazy attempt to explain away any oddities we find both in this scene and the entire movie. And I'm not having it. And everything he read, he remembered. Just say you had a photographic memory, or if you want to be technical, an eidetic memory. Jesus. She liked to bite things and had four sharp teeth. Just like my college girlfriend. Also, why would you play Scrabble with a two-year-old? And how are these two not cheating by looking at each other's letters? Has this movie ever scrabbled before? Ah, sudden worm tail. I'm afraid I must inform you of a extremely unfortunate event. Ah, well, that's a bummer. But as long as it's just the one and not the first in, say, a series of them, I'm sure I can handle it. No one knows the precise cause of the Baudelaire fire. Or why anyone would let three children walk into the remains of their still smoldering home where their parents just perished. My colleagues and I have investigated the best we can, but all we've discovered is that the blaze was started from a great distance through the refraction and convergence of light. I understand the desire to have plot points revealed as we watch them, but the narrator absolutely knows who murdered everyone because he's writing this from the goddamn future. The blaze was started from a great distance through the refraction and convergence of light. <coughs> so what was this spyglass hidden in his father's desk? I see the f***ing spyglass, asshole. Maybe stop spoon-feeding my ass. And just like that, the Baudelaire children became the Baudelaire orphans. Phew, I was worried for a bit, but everything always turns out well for orphans, so I'm super relieved. This is an excellent opportunity to walk out of the theater, living room, or airplane where this film is being shown. Breaking the fourth wall with your narration. Fourth wall oration? It's not too late to see a film about a happy little elf. You mean Nixon? Lamp, 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 lamp. Holy sir, lamps a lot, King Arthur. How is this place negasonically lamped the f out but still so goddamn dim? Guy with eyeball door and eyeball windows has an eyeball tattoo, and I am starting to think eyeballs are going to be important here. I suppose he wrote their names on his hands while I'm walking down the stairs, because while at the top, his hands were bare. I I'm sorry, I don't speak monkey. That's monkeyest. Papa. Jesus, this is like, look who's talking, only less funny. Can't you stay for a brief revivement? A glass of port? Sanka? I see, it's gonna be one of those Jim Carrey movies. I trust you've had your tetanus shots. Polio, smallpox, typhoid, malaria. Nope, their parents were flat earth anti-vaxxers actually. Also, this is a dirty ass kitchen and he's even joking about it being diseased, but where are all the insects? Mice, maggots, flies? I'm told the ceiling can be brought up to code in no time. No way this house isn't already condemned and boarded up. And even more no way he ever gets custody of kids while living in this definitely condemned house. Whatever, movie's got a movie. On to the basement with actual lava in it. And here's their bedroom. They are sharing a bedroom in this massive house and it's got so many code violations an inspector wouldn't even step foot inside. All in the name of making the weird uncles seem cruel for now? Look, a child this young would be picking her nose, not actually doing the dishes, but you do you, movie. But we've never made dinner before. It's already 7.30. 8 o'clock! Why would you even want to eat a meal prepared by kids this young under this kind of pressure? Sunny apparently is biting this can lid off, and that's hilarious about her teeth and all, but horrifying when it comes to this meal's overall cleanliness. Toddler teeth full of f***ing germs. I think you might have to turn it up. Is anybody out there? Maybe don't always allow improv on a movie set. A spittoon? You mean like... Yeah. We'll wash it twice. Not funny, just gross. It's pasta. Pasta puttanesca? Where's the roast beef? I believe you mean roast beast, and that was an entirely different movie where you played an eccentric old crank that was thought to be irredeemable. Also, you told them to make dinner. You did not ask for roast beef specifically. And this is starting to look like the kid orphan version of Swimming with Sharks, and I do not want to see some like that. Put her down!
And here's where the movie ends. The cops show up, Olaf is arrested, and the three kids are, if I'm being honest, probably split up and sent to new foster homes. You won't get a set until Violet turns 18. Oh, really? How the f*** does someone cunning and manipulative like Olaf not do his research on these kids and their fortune before he adopts them? The Baudelaire's enjoyed their evening in the sanctuary they have built together. It's a tent. They're camping out in the whole bedroom. Why can't we just say they mustered up the will to play pretend for a while? Sanctuary, Jesus. So the judge hands over an order granting Olaf custody, and the hell has he had up to this point? Trial custody? I know. Let's stop for a treat. I was promised a terrible, horrible movie, and I demand to see these seatbeltless children whack their faces into the back of the seat. That's not how locks work. They all go down, or up, at the same time. Not in thrilling sequential order. Go! This goes on for some time. Klaus, you've read books on trains. What do we do? Jack Switcher. He probably also read books on hot wiring cars, breaking glass, and escaping via the trunk through the back seat. Maybe try that. <laughs> Car seat springs would never send anything this far. Cute invention, though. I thought it was called a series of unfortunate events. Do you know what kind of scientist he is? I'd guess snake scientist. Also, that's a pronoun game, Violet. Minus five points for Gryffindor. Come in, come in, there's not much time and we have to pack. At what point should I be concerned that in addition to the abuse these children have endured, they also appear to have not had any time to bathe or change clothing since the movie started? Lamp! Lamp! Ceiling lamp! Lamp, 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 lamp! That's the two-headed cobra. Well spotted! Okay, that's going in my next erotic fiction novella. I'm sorry. My ribbon just jammed. Why does a story need to keep cutting to the storyteller? It doesn't seem to serve a narrative purpose, really, other than to give Jude Law some work. No one will be seated during the Billy Connolly plays a harp and sings scene. I had some fun with the lamps earlier, but all these candles are begging for a fire, which would make Olaf happy, so maybe he lit them all. Everything happens for a reason. It does not. Okay, so the odds of them knowing the circumference of Monty's wrist to make these letters line up are astronomical. The big cage door is open, no snake. Dead guy. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking, who woke me up at nine in the morning for this? Why is this man a police officer? No one is ever paying attention to this f kid. Um, sorry to be a physics downer, but that little fairy would just be going in circles with a prop on only one side. God, this movie is basically Miss Peregrine's Tim Burton presents Harry Potter and the BFG Spiderwick Compass. Grammar is the greatest joy in life, don't you find? Sure, yeah, I'm just a head of hangnails and invasive species. Would you like to see some pictures? Sinning crazy people makes very little sense, I realize, but who the f*** keeps a photo album under their ass? They can smell food on a human from miles away, and if they smell food, they will swarm. Well, that's definitely not happening later in the movie. The director said, let's have that baby steal some apples, and knock some over, and then call herself out on it, because who wants to make a baby look like an asshole? But allow me to introduce Michelle. No, allow Klaus and I to introduce him. This Klaus and me! This movie keeps playing linguistic twister to keep our heroes from getting to explain to other adults when Count Olaf is pretending to be someone else, and it makes me angry. Or give me old wax on, wax off me, son. <laughs> Count Olaf makes Karate Kid references? Or is it maybe just that Jim Carrey makes Karate Kid references? I never read the books, but was Count Olaf always this Jim Carrey? Oh yeah, we have a sister! In the eye of a window pane, there's an eyeball. You might call this unfortunate, because a storm is ripping off half the building the kids are standing in, but I call it most fortunate that they survived this. I'd have called this Lemony Snicket's tale about some lucky f children. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, comedy. Is it over? The thing I have been saying about this movie for the last several minutes ends up as actual dialogue in the movie. Does she tie her hair up when she has a good idea, or does she tie it up in order to get a good idea? Why does she ever untie the hair if it's that big a part of her smartness? Man, Sonny isn't helping at all. But it is one thing to do something in theory, another to do it in practice. <laughs> no sh just ask my penis. Children, there are good people and bad people in the world. What a Lesson! Man, this movie was weak in parts, but that moral of the story there, it really brings it all home. Good and bad people in the world. I never knew. You get the picture. So, a movie skips over super dark death scene, but they've also already spelled it out pretty clearly to viewers young and old. So, they're doing this to get a better rating from the MPAA, and ultimately it's still super dark in an otherwise only pretend dark movie. Aunt Josephine. Perhaps the children are in a perpetual state of shock after the very recent death of their parents, followed by the discovery of their uncle's corpse, but these kids are acting very calm for having just watched the haunting sight of a woman being slowly devoured by leeches. 
Count Olaf! What are you doing here? Well, he's trying to steal the children back so he can steal their money. Duh. Better question, Poe. What are you doing here? Did you get wind of a storm and just assume the children were out in the water needing rescue? Ready? Okay, sir. Don't try to get on my good side. Discount Dustin Huffman. Holy sh What the hell? So Olaf's plan is to take Violet as his child bride so he can get the inheritance and I'm just gonna be over here in the corner throwing up for the next few minutes. Let's add 25 cents to cover the time that I'm gone, but mostly for the child bride Look at you, Violet. You look so beautiful. <laughs> I think you mean reasonably attractive. Violet's only 14. She can't be legally married. She can if she has the permission of her guardian. And who's that? Oh yes. Me! Jesus. Well, since the narrator gave up on reminding us how dour this movie was going to be, let me simply say this is a show. Once you say I do and sign the marriage certificate, you'll really be my loverly bride. You cook and clean and massage my bunions. Really tempted to just add 50 sins and be done and walk away. This movie was unoriginal and unfunny already. Now it's just skeezy. Who wants their kids' family movies skeezy? Granted, this was 2004, but I'm shocked they got away with this. I'll never say I do. I think you might. Once you look up there. God damn it, if either of these two older siblings had an instinctive gene in their bodies, Sonny couldn't go missing this often or now this nefariously. Pay attention to your baby sister. Violet, Violet, Violet. You're 14 years old. You should know by now that you can't have everything you want. I mean, I wanted Stuffy Madison until my senior year, and I didn't learn she was out of my league until her boyfriend punched me in the stomach and said, she's out of your league, dork, so stop sending her love letters. And that was at graduation, so. You're going to help me get what I want. It's hard to even joke about this at this point. This is an older man intimidating his own blood relative, a minor, into marrying him, even using physical violence to do so. If he were a fringe Mormon sect leader, this would be a documentary about his crimes. This shit is creepy and gross, and we don't need it in our entertainment in order to be entertained. Who the fuck are these people? They said it was a play, but Olaf and his troop are terrible. They can't sell out a backyard venue this big. Why didn't you just bite her way out? Olaf screwed himself by making an entire production out of this, including scripted scenes for his troop to perform leading up to the ceremony, giving our heroes time to save the day! Um, busted ass umbrellas will not work as grappling hooks. Kids do not believe most anything this movie tells you about physics. God damn. And you, sir, have been taken by surprise. Mispronouncing surprise. This. Don't look down. Don't look down. Movie has time for this. I do. Dustin, let's talk about that glass houses thing again, maybe. Movie makes it seem like signing a marriage certificate is what makes a marriage official. And that may be true in the real world, but countless movies have told me it's actually when they say I do. Like Princess Bride called, who wants some information about this marriage license, please. No, that part is true, actually. Villain needlessly confesses to a crime, revealing evidence to his corruption mere moments before getting away with it, cliche. We were married in an official ceremony with official and legal vows in front of a bona fide justice of the P.S. Done playing around on this f movie. 20 more cents. Arrest him! For what? If the adults are finally believing the children's accusations against Count Olaf, shouldn't they immediately become suspicious of the deaths of their previous caretakers? And sure, maybe evidence is needed before arresting on suspicion of murder, but we are talking about an alternate reality where logic is questionable at best. This beam of light caught a house on fire from 37 blocks away. After making a hole in the paper, it should, at the very least, make a hole in Olaf's face. Also, how did no one notice said massive beam of light stretching 37 blocks toward the Baudelaire house on the day it erupted in flames? I'm sure the authorities will catch up with Count Olaf very soon. No, no, we all never have to deal with that terrible man again. At least not until he looks like Neil Patrick Harris. Oh, it's the Merovingian's house from Matrix Reloaded. Watch out for ghost assassins! Who delivers mail to a goddamn burned down house? I see. It's with these people, man. Lemonade. Make sure you click that bell icon. <clears throat> Sellouts. But clicking the little bell icon is how you make sure you get notified every time we release a video. So click it. <clears throat> Sellouts. He's a perfect liberty to kiss whomever he likes. I really couldn't care less. Every family has its secrets. Doors left unopened. Can open worms everywhere. So I'm taking you to live with your dear Count Olaf. And I like warm hugs. Mortuary management, how do you do? doesn't get eaten by the eels at this time. 
I suppose I don't have to kill you. I'm Ivy positive. I'd be positive they ain't touching me with no needle. <laughs> ah, flag!